Hello everyone, Siri Emerald here, and this will be an unboxing of the Iron Man 2 Mark IV Secret Project Hot Toys exclusive. Uh, so this would be um, done by a distributor other than Sideshow, although Sideshow as well uh, had this exclusive. So this is a little different uh, packaging, I mean very minor, all actuality, made by Hot Toys. Um, it's the uh, shoe box style box and the brown shoe didn't come with this one it may not have even come that way if they picked it up directly um, in Hong Kong sometimes they don't come with the brown shipper they come just like this uh, this does have on the back the little sticker which inclines me to believe that it possibly is the, uh, the history of this particular package that did come directly from uh, Hong Kong out there uh, not really certain so up here at the top of this package it has the Romansby series Iron Man 2 Mark IV Secret Project Collector's Edition MMS 153 uh, there's a warning that it's a choking hazard uh, that it's an adult collectible not a toy recommend for ages 15 and up small parts not for children under 3 years old and the, uh, there's a notice on here that says this package is intended to protect the product only. And here it says produced by Hot Toys at www.hottoys.com.hk and hottoys.jp and distributed by Toys Hunter and Marvel and Hot Toys and says made in China. Iron Man 2 Mark IV Super Project. So, um, let's get right to getting this out of the box here. On the front of this, this is, uh, as you can see in here, it's actually molded into the cardboard, this swirl. And this is a, a swirl, we see the swirl in the Iron Man movies a lot. I, I reckon it uh, is to represent the uh, repulsor thruster of the arc reactor areas that he, that he has. The majority of those are round. Uh, we've seen otherwise, uh, in the later model suits, we've seen rectangular ones and pyramid shaped ones. For the most part, they've been this. So, and this little sticker as well. Hot Toys exclusive. So, let's get back to the figure. So, this is previously owned. I didn't buy this new. So, um, it's going to be not a new unboxing. This figure's uh, got a couple years on it. Iron Man 2 Mark IV Secret Project. Hot Toys Image presents Movie Mastery Series Production. Cast and crew, creative producers Tyra Chan and JC Hong, product designer Jason Wu, engineering development team Jason Wu, Dixon IP, and Eddie Lau, head sculptor Cole Jun, head painter JC Hong, head art director JC Hong and Cole Jun, printing controller JC Hong, packaging designers TF Wong and Monster Jr., photography directors Eddie Lau and Monster Jr., Production controllers Jason Wu and H.B. Chan. Wholesale information toy hunters. Wholesale at hottoys.com HK. All right. Let's so get this out of here. So they uh, originally had made a Mark IV armor uh, in the proper colors. The red and gold and uh, this one was a special repaint that they had done they painted it versions of, of gray now this is a very limited edition one all of them are uh, of limited production so sooner or later they'll stop making them and uh, you won't be able to buy them brand new anymore and you'll have to get them from third-party resellers if you wanted to pick one up well this one is a very limited edition run Hot Toys is real tight-lipped on their production numbers, so it's difficult to know exactly what they are. But this one I do know is a very limited run. So this is a this is a treat to get a hold of one of these. In my opinion, this is a treat. So let's see what do we have here. So we have this front packaging, and we'll go ahead and set that aside so we can get to the inside, the bottom packaging here. So actually, there's there's three sets of packaging because this one has the arm pieces, the the rockets that go on the uh, the arms right there. 
set that over here and here are the stands so you have two stands one is the stand that goes with the uh, Hall of Armor set the, it's in his garage and um, he's done two of those uh, one it was a four pack and one was a seven pack uh, when he had them stacked up or uh, lined up and this is a light up there's a there's a uh, little LED that runs around the bottom of it there it uses three AAA batteries and there's his Iron Man 2 movie 2010 Marvel film finance LLC all related character names and their distinctive likenesses, trademark and copyright, 2011 Marvel, Hot Toys Limited, all rights reserved. So, there's his little case. And um, with this, you have from this piece the center uh, that you would stand them on. It's a little clear acrylic or plexi stand. That he uh, that he would go on, and you would stick that in there. And with this also, you would then use this lobster claw piece right here. And there's two kinds of lobster claws that they've made. This one doesn't have the back support. It's on the ladder pieces. So, um, if you're just using it for a static pose where he's just standing there and he's not necessarily into a flight position, this is great for just holding him upright. Now, if you're putting him into a flight pose and you need to bend this in certain areas, that little back piece down there helps align him and stays him in a, uh, a more secure location. So this would be great for just standing them on that um, if that's what you desire to do. Now they give you another stand and th this stand comes with some of the pieces as well. Um, let's see if we can get this out of here. I don't believe this piece was displayed at all uh, the previous owner. This, this has been really taken care of well it appears when I pre-examined this. But um, I'm really excited about this piece. So this stand um, is, an, is an alternative stand that comes with some of the pieces. And so it says right here, Marvel Studios Iron Man 2, Mark IV, Secret Project. Uh, IV is Roman numeral 4. The, the I before the V, you need to subtract 1 from 5 to give you 4. And on the bottom it has the same information that was on the bottom of that other stand. So, there's the two different stands that you can pose him on. And what's nice about that also is that uh, with those extra stands, you can put other pieces on other stands that didn't necessarily come with one of those stands if you want to display certain pieces together. For instance, I wanted to display my Mark VII Stealth in this line. I can put him on one of these other stands, which he currently is on, an alternate stand from what he came with, because that's how I wish to display him. So, now, they really have made this pole a lot longer than it needed to be. But I, that's great, because, you know, where this is going to go is right about here on on his uh, waist to display him at. But, uh, I mean, that's great because you can use it with um, other figures if you need to. You can actually lift him up and put him into a flight pose by having it up here at the top. Um, you can actually have him lifted up. You can use this pole in another base if you wanted to. The ones that don't screw in, some of them have the little screws that can be removed. So, it's good that it's long, but it's it's longer than it needs to be. Also, because it's clear, you really don't see it. It blends into the background, and it's out of your mind. When you're looking at your figure, you don't really see it. So that's good compared to the black poles, which you can definitely see all the time. Your brain will you know eventually turn them out. But so this is a 
just like the others, you have a, a screw, and a, I mean, a, a nut and a bolt that uh, tighten in here. So we'll just set that on there. It's not going to go on right now because it needs to be loosened up, but we'll set that right there. All right, so you know what? I'll just take this off. There's no sense in even having that on there right now. Let's read the instructions. So here we go. Uh, Iron Man 2, Mark IV, Secret Project, 1-6 scale, limited edition collectible figure. Right there. And so the first thing it says, LED light up micro arc reactor on the chest. And it says to remove the scotch tape at the back of the figure. Uh, they had little um, pieces of, I don't know why it says scotch tape. It really was a hard piece of plastic. It wasn't really scotch tape. And you'd pull it out of the little slot, and that would uh, enable the batteries to get to juice up the piece. And then there's a little on-off switch there, right above that. And it always, I don't know, I've I've become accustomed to this, but I'm so used to in the United States, you flip a switch up to turn it on, and you flip a switch down to turn it off. But for these Iron Man figures, it's, it's just backwards. And it says to replace them with AG9s. AG9s. I wonder if those are the LR621s also, the small ones, or if those are the big ones. I should know this by now. I think the AG9s are the big ones. So it's got three big ones for the chest. So it's chest to be nice and bright. Uh, it says there's waist movement. Use the function stick for easy removal. Oh, no, excuse me. Chest armor. Use the function stick for easy removal. And you can pull the chest piece off to see his inner workings. And uh, you pull the waist apart by pulling the upper body slightly to give him more uh, bends and twists. And the repulsor palms looks like um, a little piece of plastic is in his biceps. And the switch as well it looks like it's in his bicep for turning the repulsor palms on. And those are the AG1 LR621 batteries right there. And interchangeable missile armor. So that's on his forearm. And it says you take off the forearm armor in the front, take out the left and right armors, and take out the back one at last. Take out the left and right armors, and take out the back one at last. In reverse, replace the missile forearm armors from back to front. Mm, please make sure the arm is straight before assembling the forearm armors. And do not assemble the armors when the arm is bent. Otherwise, the newly assembled armor will be inserted into the inner elbow armor on its upper side. Yeah, we don't want to do that. In this situation, when the inner elbow armor covers the back forearm armor, it will interfere with the arm movement. And that would not be good. And the tip to differentiate the directions of the missile armors. Uh, check the L and the R under the armors before replacing them on the figure's arms as shown in the above diagram. So there you see they put an L and R on them like we've seen on the other pieces. So it's good that they, they do that. It's really helpful in a lot of times. And the eyes on the helmet are controlled, it looks like, in the neck. And uh, so the on-off switch is on the back of the neck. And interchangeable Tony Stark head. You pull the, uh, the head and the neck off. And then you'll put down the collar around there. And then put the, uh, the head and neck on there. And he has air flaps. So insert the outer flaps into the hole at the back as shown. All six pieces of air flaps are movable simply up to... Seem to move up to display all flaps, maximum 40 degrees and 60 degrees as shown. So the bottom ones are 40 degrees and the top ones are 60 degrees. Do not bend the metal flaps underneath. Retractable countermeasure dispenser. Turn the disc anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. That's how we say it in English. With two fingers and let it expand automatically. Oh, so it's that's pretty cool. Instead of it being a replaceable piece like it is on the Mark III, it's, in the, it's the same piece. You just twist it open and close it. It says to contract it, or to close it, vice versa, 
contract the fist by rotating it and pressing it with force. Air brake deployment system, open the air brake system cover within 45 degrees. Uh, and the LED lighter figure stand, open the clips of the figure holder before putting the figure between them. Unscrew the figure holder to adjust the height and screw the bolt from the nut. Unscrew and open the battery cover to put three AAA batteries. And turn on switch in the back. Improper use of the figure stand may create scratches on the figure surface or break the figure holder. Do not mix old new batteries, do not mix alkaline standards, carbon zinc or rechargeables. Battery installation and parts assembly should be done by an adult. Do not get LED directly. It may be harmful to your eyes. And please change the batteries to serve the as a battery regularly to avoid leakage. And the both situations are not included in maintenance and replacement. So here's the instructions. So as I was saying, um, I know the instructions probably aren't fans of everybody, but once I put them back in the box, I don't have to get the box out in case I get forget what I'm doing. I just watch my video again. All right, so up here we have our typical warning. Please read the instructions first. Please read instruction sheet first and follow all construction details during the assemble process. So that's a, a warning that we uh, have seen a lot. And here's the air flaps for the back. Here's the piece. He's got his really cool um, sunglasses. This is the figure that he was sitting in the giant donut when uh, he was approached. I believe it was by Nick Fury who came to him and talked with him. And he was wearing his little sunglasses while he was up there enjoying his uh, donuts, if I remember correctly. Correct me if I am wrong. So, uh, there's this collar and his head. And he has his fists, the articulated fingers, and the repulsor palms. So let's get him out of here. Feels good. He's a good feeling piece. There's the little flaps right there. The little on off switch. We'll have to check those batteries. Right there. The face place does not come off. So he has this real. You know, he feels like he looks. He he uh, he doesn't feel nice and smooth. I mean, he's smooth. I'm not saying he's he's not smooth, but he doesn't feel like he's glossy, and he's not. He's uh, very matte colored. So you would assume that would be like, you know, the stealth colors, so he could sneak around and not be seen, or very military. Uh, all the navy ships and whatnot are painted. In this type of a gray. Let's look at this uh, pop out here. See how this works. Let's just switch it in, turn it counterclockwise. There it is. Pops right out of there. The little countermeasures do. And then it says to push it in and turn it the other direction. To lock it in. The little legs get in there just a little bit. Let's get that just right. Push that in. Give it a little turn. And it should lock in. There we go. So these little uh, pieces here, when it's pushed in all the way, look like they uh, they kind of retract into it. So you don't have to uh, have those sticking out. And then when it's out, those little pieces stick out. So let's check this other side. Do the same thing over here. Push it in counterclockwise. Now, see that's interesting. It's actually um, actually the way that you 
spin those to open them is you spin them depending on the side. They spin with the top forward. So on this one you actually spin it clockwise to get it to open up. And this one you actually spin counterclockwise to get it to open up. And adversely to close it, you push this in and spin it clockwise to lock it up. And this one you push it in and spin it counterclockwise to lock it up. This piece doesn't seem to be as smoothly closed as the other. I have to finagle with that a little bit. See if it's keeping that out like that. Let's look back here at these little air flaps on the back. Now, unlike the Mark II, my Mark II is very loose. This guy is very tight. And they painted the little uh, wires in there. That's a nice little touch. I like it they went to that detail to do that. And see how his knee bends. Okay, so he's got one joint here and two joints in the knee, which will give him a nice good bend there. And the thigh rotates as well as the hip. The hip doesn't rotate much. It's really limited, but the thigh rotates a lot on the hip there. I have to work with that a little bit there. It looks a little loose. Not wanting to close up. Well, I have to spend some time on that. And we we'll see his little foot down here. His little toe moves up and down. And his foot moves quite a bit. More than some of the other pieces. That's nice. That's some great, great movement there. A little flap there. And so, of course, he just pulls his waist apart there. That's where his, his bendability gets a pretty good bend forward there. And a pretty good bend back. The head and neck. Uh, didn't need to pop them off, but since we got them off, let's look at the head versus the neck mobility. So the head spins on the neck. Uh, imagine then the head, of course, will come off of the neck. Yeah, just like the Mark II. It's a little interchangeable there. And with the head and neck that comes apart like that, a lot of times you can get a little bit more uh, forward or up for flight. So I'm not sure how much we can get. No, not much at all. So it's not really forward flight like that. It doesn't, uh, doesn't get very far. In fact, the head and neck don't move much at all in that regards. It will, of course, um, spin. Hmm. I take that, of course, out of there. It doesn't really spin all the way around, so it really stays into a natural pose. You really can't put it all the way around. I mean, not that you want to be putting them on backwards, but they really have limited the head and neck down to a more natural position. Lifts up there. The uh, bicep rotates on the arm, and of course rotates like that. Um, this is attached to the chest. Uh, we're finding them nowadays are they're attached to the arm. No, I take that back. It is attached to the arm. Right there you can see it's attached to the arm. And let's look at the elbow here. Just like the knee, we have a double elbow there. Yeah, about a 90 degrees, not too much. But at least it's not the rubber pieces that we had. Some of the other ones, I'm not, much, not a big fan of the rubber. I'm really scared of it falling apart. And it looks like this wrist 
gone. It stays uh, with whichever one you're using. So if you're going to use a repulsor one, it doesn't look like you use a different wrist gauntlet. I wonder how that would work then. Let's put the repulsor hand on here. Okay, that's sort of an articulated one. Let's grab this repulsor one here. It's, it's not really a, uh, a repulsor hand like the others. It is. Uh, you can see that it's kind of angled up. The, uh, but not much. Not like the one where he's totally up and out. It's kind of a relaxed uh, uh, repulsor hand. And it's pretty cool. It's interesting to see it in that uh, bend like that. So, but this piece stays on there, it uh, moves up and down for that uh, extra piece there. So, I'm going to have to put some batteries in here and test that out. There, this piece just pries right off, and you can see his inner workings there, and then it just pushes right back on, like such. Let's um, put his Tony Stark head on. Maybe you stand there for a minute. Now you probably shouldn't stand your figures without their support, but I think he'll be all right. <laughs> All right, let's get the uh, Tony Stark head out of here. It looks like this is, uh, it is. What if that pops off? Probably shouldn't be pulling on it by this. Yeah, I'm not sure, but the good thing is, is that it rotates. The head and neck rotate separately. I like that. That's really, really good. I like that a lot, actually. And here's the collar piece. So when we take off the head and neck here, what you do then is you put the collar. I believe it goes... Like that. Put the collar in there, and then just pop the neck right in there. That looks really good, as such. And then if you wanted him to hold his helmet, you would just disconnect the helmet from his neck down here. Let's get you set up over here again. Just pull this off. And then if you're using his articulated hand, which has the joints in it that move, just like our fingers do, there's three joints on them. So you can give a, uh, give a peace sign. Now, it looks like this one isn't as movable as some of the other ones. They've Replace these with a little ball joint on some of the other ones so they can bend the fingers in a little bit as well. So we can get the uh, we can still get the same uh, movements, just a little bit different in the uh, the manner to which they move. Come on, focus in there, camera. So you've got the peace sign. You can have them do the. Uh, Spider-Man flip right there. Or the I love you. There's the Spider-Man flip. The I love you. You can do hang loose. Um, 
the rock and roll sign, or, or hang tough, or, you know, whatever you want to call that, sign of the fox, whatever. And you can sort of put his hands in any way, but what also is, the point I was getting to when I grabbed this, is you can have him hold his helmet in his hand. So I'll take this fist off here, and put his little articulated hand on here. And then as he stands here, he put his uh, helmet right here, curl his fingers up, and have him hold his helmet. There on his side is just an example where you can you can do uh, that without having to use any sticky tape or anything on that lines. You know your creativity is limited only by um, the ideas that you create yourself. Or are, you see that uh, you can follow along, play with your figure, and figure out how best you may wish to desire to display him holding his helmet if you should wish to do that. And Here's his little glasses. Now, the uh, these got these little checks on them. The red and gold one, I think these are red, red and black checked. So these are black and gray checked. And unlike the Bruce Banner figure that go on these little holes, these just rest right on his ears. I don't know why they didn't do Bruce Banner the same way. Maybe he, his ears were underneath his hair. I'll have to look, revisit that. So, the glasses fit on there very nicely right over his ears. And they're on there really good. I, I have no fear of them falling off um, with him just being displayed. So that's really cool. You can have him wearing his glasses there. So, let's um, put his little air flaps on. here. These little metal pieces can be bent ever so slightly um, from where they are. They're actually on a, a separate hinge. Uh, this one, I'm not sure if it is or not. Yeah, it is too. So you add a little more element to the air flaps right there. Put that on his back. And just slide right up in here. And this is goes here. And snaps in. And we'll do the same with this one. And you can see that's how it goes right there. And then, so then when they're open, you really get a nice little uh, flight air brake thing going on there. If that's what you desire to have them open as such. Really put it into some interesting little things. You can use big ones, little ones, depending on how much air brake he needed to slow him down would be the uh... all right so oh my uh, camera stopped there so we're starting back up again so let's check his um, forearm armors now let's set this over here and put him right here while we get these out of their uh, boxes let's just use this little stand here Yeah. 
here. Taped up right there. So don't believe these have ever been taken out of the package at all, ever. instructions were saying let's have a look here you can see a little R right there inside it right by that post I don't know if you can see that or not a little R right there so this will be on his right arm and there's four of them so we will See if we can put this on here, see how that goes. A little surgery here. Hmm. All right, well, that piece just fell clean off. So that's the top piece. So I'll set that right here and, and take off the side pieces. Set these so that we can remember what's how they go on there. Come out the, so we're pulling them out and then here's the bottom piece right here. So it says put the bottom piece on first. And there's a little a couple little missile rockets right there. So we'll put that on. The tab and slot. There and there like so. And then we've got this is the the um, Inside one. No. This must be the outside one. No. Wait a minute. Let's have a look at this. It says R. It is the inside one. I was right the first time. It's like putting together a little jigsaw puzzle. Okay, so now this one is the outside one. It fits in there quite nicely, actually. And then we have the top one. effort at all required to put these in here. This doesn't seem to be wanting to stick in there very well. Let's have a make sure this is the right. It is. Straighten his arm out. Let's see if we can get in there and get better. There's only one tab and one slot it appears. Better hold it on there. You can just, you don't want to put too much pressure onto it. You know how. There we go. I felt it snap in. All right, so there's his little rockets on his arm. That's uh, some serious business there. Let's knock his little chest piece off. Clean his arm up. These pieces will collide if you're not paying attention to what you're doing when you move them around. So you want to keep that in mind as you position your pieces. That's, uh, that's some serious armament there. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight little rockets on there. Let's 
Some serious business. So if I remember correctly, this was the um, this was what was this one used? Let me think. Iron Man 2. We had the Mark V that was at the Monaco Raceway against the Flash. Did he use this one? Hmm. I have to think. I have to revisit the movie. See if I can figure out. We can use this one. So, there you are. Iron Man 2, Mark 4, Secret Project. Tony Stark, sunglasses. I'm excited about this figure. I mean, I'm really excited about this figure. This is uh, one of my grails, I would have to say. He is a welcome addition to the family. Right there. Like that. He really looks good with all the little battle damage on there. I like him. So, uh, thanks for watching everyone. Leave your comments about this figure in the section below. Tell me what you think about him. Is he your grail? Do you have one? Um, follow me on Facebook at Siri.Emerald. Twitter, Siri.Emerald. Subscribe and like my videos. Definitely leave comments. And stay tuned for the next video. Happy collecting.